Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis. Welcome to a new video. So in previous videos, we have talked about multiple myeloma, how to diagnose it, how to treat it, a case about multiple myeloma, actually like 25 cases. And then we talked about a mnemonic on the multiple myeloma and the plasma cell. Today, let's talk about hyperviscosity syndrome so that when we next talk about Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, it's gonna be so easy. And let's get started. So as you know, here is the hematopoiesis slide. You have myeloid and lymphoid. Here are the B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes will convert into plasma cells. At least some of them will. Plasma cells will secrete aminoglobulins. And in cases of Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, it's IgM. In cases of multiple myeloma, it's IgG, etc. So you get the idea. Plasma cells are secreting aminoglobulin. Plasma cell disorders are collectively known as plasma cell dyscrasias or monoclonal gammopathies. So what's the flip is hyperviscosity syndrome? Group of symptoms caused by increased blood viscosity. As you know, here is your blood vessel and there is blood inside of it. It has a certain viscosity, okay? Just like the oil in your engine it has a certain viscosity. If it goes too high, we are in a big trouble. Same as the engine. So what will happen? You start to get tortuous retinal veins because of the viscid blood. Your blood vessels are gonna be like this. That's not good. And this will lead to visual disturbances. You have vascular segmentation and dilatation of the retinal veins if you look at the fundus. Next, we have some neurological problems. Why? Due to the sluggish blood flow in the vasa nervosa, the blood vessels that supplies the nerves. So we have neurological problems such as headache, dizziness, tinnitus, deafness, stupor, vertigo, etc. Also, blood vessels are congested and engorged with blood. It's so visit and thick, you can bleed. Wow. So, visual disturbances, neurological problems, bleeding. My favorite method of teaching is the analogy. I get something simple from the real life and boom, suddenly you understand complicated concepts in medicine. So hyperviscosity is just like your engine oil. If the oil is too old because you're not changing it, either because you're broke or not paying attention, it gets old, it builds up particulates, it's gonna clog the oil filter. Clogged oil filter will not let oil pass. Then the engine's ability to maintain constant persistent speed is going to be in jeopardy. And now it's going to be sputter and do all kind of crazy stuff. And you'll not be happy driving this car. Same thing as hyperviscosity syndrome. If you go back to the previous slide, you can understand what I'm talking about. You have visual problems, neurological problems and bleeding because your blood is too viscous. There are different types of hyperviscosity. So let's draw the blood vessel again. The blood vessel has two things. It has plasma, which is the fluid, and it has little tiny red blood cells. So either the plasma is becoming more viscous called serum hyperviscosity, such as paraproteins, IgM, which is the biggest one in cases of Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. This is serum hyperviscosity. Or the polycythemic hyperviscosity, the red blood cells are getting more numerous, such as cases of erythrocytosis, or the white blood cells are getting numerous, such as leukocytosis. Or you have a deformity in the red blood cells, causing them to clog together, okay? They combine together like this and clog the blood vessel. This is called red blood cell deformity related syndrome of hyperviscosity such as sickle cell anemia that I've talked about in many videos. You can check my playlist on hematology to know more. So how to diagnose hyperviscosity syndrome? It's easy. There's something called plasma viscosity you measured in the lab. Normally it's 1.8 which is very close to 2 where I grew up. So 2 means that the plasma is double has doubled the viscosity of water. That's normal. In hyperviscosity, it's gonna be higher than two or higher than 1.8, like four, five, six, something like that. Also make sure the clinical signs and symptoms of hyperviscosity syndrome is gonna help you diagnose the disease. Easy. 
Treatment of hyperviscosity syndrome. Let's draw the blood vessel again. Here is your nice blood vessel. It has two things. It has plasma with its proteins and it has the cells such as red blood cells and white blood cells. Cool. If we'd like to treat it, you can remove the plasma called plasmapheresis. You can remove the white blood cells called leukapheresis or leukapheresis. Or you can do phlebotomy, which is removing blood. What else can you do? Hydration, baby. Again, the normal serum viscosity is around 1.8, which means double that of water. So here we have water on this side. Here we have the normal plasma. And here we have the hyperviscosity syndrome. If you are here at hyperviscosity syndrome, in order for you to reduce the viscosity, let's add water. Let's pull it to the left side. So that's how hydration can help with hyperviscosity syndrome. Things get better with coke and medicine gets better with medicosis. That's why you should subscribe to my YouTube channel and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You can view all of these notes and you can download them, print them and enjoy. Just go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. In the next video, we'll talk about Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. Until next time.